Hi everybody. We're going to continue uh, our discussion from chapter one of the text. Uh, our topic today is section three, which is about subsets of sets. So here we go. So suppose that we begin with two sets, A and B. Then if every element of A is also an element of B, that means that A is a subset of B. And the notation for being a subset is this symbol here. And so we write A is a subset of B. So as an example, if A is the set, I don't know, minus 3, 15, purple, and B is the set minus 3, 15, purple, an elephant, then A is a subset of B. Because every element of A is also an element of B. If at least one element of A is not an element of B, then A is not a subset of B. So the way this, the way that A can be, I mean, in order to not be a subset, it has to be the case that at least one of the elements of A is not an element of B. So for example, if C were the set minus 3, 14, and purple, then C is not a subset of B because 14 is an element of C, but 14 is not an element of B. So here's a couple more examples. If our set B consists of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, then the set 2, 3, 7 is a subset of B because 2, 3, and 7 elements of A are also all elements of B. But if we look at this set, 2, 3, and 11, it's not a subset of the set 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, because 11, call this set here A and this set here B, 11 is in A, but 11 is not in B. So to show that one subset, one set is a subset of another, you have to check that every element of the set is an element of the bigger set. To show that it's not a subset, you just need to find one that isn't. Here's a few more examples. Uh, the natural numbers, which from our standard notation are the set of counting numbers. are a subset of the integers, which are the positive and negative whole numbers, because every counting number is also an integer. And the integers are a subset of the rational numbers, because every whole number, positive or negative, can be thought of as a fraction with denominator 1. So in each of these cases, uh, we have a smaller and a bigger set. And the smaller set is a subset of the bigger set. Here's a maybe slightly more complicated example. So remember that r cross n 
is the Cartesian product of the real numbers and the natural numbers. So it consists of the collection of pairs, R, N, where R is a real number and N is a natural number. I mean, a typical example might be pi 4, which is an element of R cross N. R cross R is a collection of pairs R1, R2, where R1 is in R and R2 is in R. And since the natural numbers are contained in R from the just because every natural number is a real number. Uh, it means that we can think of our pair Rn, which is in the real numbers across the natural numbers, is also in the real numbers across the real numbers. So every element of the reals across the natural numbers is contained in the reals across the reals. On the other hand, here's an example where something goes wrong. The natural numbers cross the real numbers is not a subset of the real numbers cross the natural numbers. Because the natural numbers cross the real numbers is the collection of pairs NR, where N is in the natural numbers and R is in the real numbers. And R cross N is the other way around. Rn, where R is in the real numbers and N is in the natural numbers. So to show that N cross R is not contained in R cross N, we need to find an element of n cross r, which is not in r cross n. And the way to do that is to choose an element whose second component is a real number which is not a rational number, not a natural number, because then the pair won't be in r cross n. So for example, if I take the number three, the pair three pi, which is an element of n cross r, but is not an element of r cross n. Because although 3 is an element of r, pi is not an element of n. And since there is an element of n cross r that is not in r cross n. We know that n cross r is not a subset of r cross. One thing that's always true is that any set A is an L, a subset of itself. And that's because certainly every element of A is an element of A. Remember, to be a subset is to mean every element of this set has to be an element of this set. And that's kind of what you might call tautologically or automatically true in this case. Finally, uh, 
the empty set is a subset of every set. So this is a little bit weird. The condition to be a subset is that every element of, the, of this set has to be an element of this set. So is it true that every element of the empty set is an element of A? Well, the empty set doesn't have any elements, and this may sound kind of strange, but as when we come back to talk about this in the context of logic, we'll see that in a situation where you have, where you're asked, is, is every element of this an element of this, and there are no elements of this, then the answer is yes. Put another way, I can't produce an element. There is no element of the empty set that isn't in A. And the reason for that is because there are no elements of the empty set. So if this wasn't a subset, I would have to be able to produce an element of it which wasn't in A, and I can't. So no matter what A is, the empty set is a subset of it. Okay, we'll continue uh, in subsequent videos.